Hello, it's Eden with the Great Valley Museum located at the Modesto Junior College. Today, we are going to learn about orbits and meteor showers with Fred. So Fred, I heard people talking about the Great Conjunction and something called the Christmas Star. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, before we talk about the Great Conjunction or talking about the Christmas Star, I would like to kind of give you an idea overview of our solar system and it shows you the multiple orbits. Okay, so here's our solar system, okay? You can take a look at uh, the different orbits of each planet here, like here's our planet here, Earth, Venus, and Mercury. Over here, the bigger gas giants. But this is basically a top view of our solar system and their different orbits. And please note, when we're talking about this, it's all in one plane. They're all in the same plane, going the same direction. Okay, so you asked me about the Great Conjunction. Well, it's about these two planets right here. The focus will be on Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, as Jupiter is moving in its orbit, it's catching up with Saturn. And eventually, by December 21st, it's going to be in line to make it look like one star. And that's where they get the idea of the Christmas star. It's going to be that bright. Okay, now this string that I'm going to use here, piece of string, is going to be the line of vision to kind of show you what it's going to look like from the planet Earth where we live. So here it is, the planet Earth, and here's our line of vision, okay? And if you notice, we're in the same plane, and to us it'll appear that they're coming together. They're in separate orbits, but they're coming together, and this is the Great Conjunction. Oh, so that's what's called the Great Conjunction. When Saturn and Jupiter's alignment is the closest on December 21st. I also heard that there's something else going on on December 21st. You're right. We have a, another celestial event called the winter solstice, and this is something that deals with the planet's orbit. All right, a little bit about the winter solstice. Okay, first of all, we were talking about orbits earlier. Well, the Earth goes through an orbit of 365 days to make one complete journey around the sun. And part of the journey is the winter solstice where it, you have your shorter days, longer nights, and this is due to the fact that the sun is concentrating its rays in the southern hemisphere due to the tilt in our planet here, the North Pole and the South Pole at a 23 and a half degrees. And as it moves on in its journey throughout the sun, like let's go to March, let's say, because we're in December right now, that would be the equinox, the vernal equinox. And then as we get towards like summer, another three months, you'll notice we're getting more sunlight and things like that. It's because the concentration of rays are more focused on the uh, northern hemisphere because of the tilt. The tilt stays the same all the way around. It doesn't change. It always stays the same. And it goes into the next, uh, next part of the orbit would be right where the equinox is called the autumn equinox. And then after that, uh, when it gets to December again, we get to what they call the winter solstice. And that all happens on December 21st. Thank you, Fred. That was a lot of great information on orbits. Now, can you tell us more about how orbits are related to meteor showers? Good question. Let me show you. Let's switch spots. Okay, in order for a meteor shower to occur, you have three players. You have uh, a planet like ours, planet Earth, right here. This is the Earth. You have, of course, a comet, and you have to have the sun. The sun is what keeps us in our orbit. And as we are going along this dotted line here, that's supposed to be like our orbit, we will eventually go through the debris or the what they call the dust trail of the comet. And that is what's creating the meteor shower, is that when, if you take a look at my lights here, See all the lights flaring up there? As we go through it, our atmosphere will start to uh, disintegrate these little pieces of fragments and dust particles from the comet. So what's really incredible, Eden, is that these particles that are left by the comet are about this small. I mean, we're talking about tiny piece of pebble, uh, a kernel size, we have some are even smaller, like a piece of rice or a grain of rice. And uh, if you don't think that's small, I mean, think about it. We have 
some that come in our atmosphere that are only the size of a, a grain of sand. Eden, not all meteor showers are created by comets. They can also be created by like an asteroid. The comet is made up of ice and dust and is nicknamed like the dirty snowball. Whereas the, the asteroid is basically just solid rock. So Fred, will we be able to see any meteor showers this month? As a matter of fact, there are two, two meteor showers. Let me place the Earth on its orbit there. And let's start with the first one. That's on December the 13th. We have a meteor shower that's created and produced by an asteroid called 3200 Fethman. And it's gonna be in the night sky where you see Gemini. And uh, they call them the Geminid uh, meteor shower. The second one is gonna be on December the 21st. And this is gonna be produced by a comet called Comet Tuttle and it'll actually be radiating uh, in the direction of the north uh, where you see the Big Dipper or the whole constellation Ursa Major, and they call this the Ursius meteor shower. Thank you, Fred, for the great information on orbits and meteor showers. Saturn and Jupiter may appear to be closer than six feet apart, but actually their orbits are millions of miles apart. They're keeping their social distance in the solar system. Mark your calendars for the upcoming events in the night sky.